Hi, I'm Mindy Peters, the Solutions Manager at SPI, and this is an exciting video. We are going to be setting up a ConvertKit account from scratch. I have zero subscribers. We're starting from the very beginning, and I thought you might like to come along with me. So here is the situation. I just have a little side website that I am setting up for myself personally, and ConvertKit is my email service provider of choice, and I would like to have an email list on that website so I can start to collect interest. And so I need an account. Now, if you are looking to set up a ConvertKit account, you can obviously go to convertkit.com to set up a new account. Or if you want to support SPI and you want to help support the videos that we're making, you could use our affiliate link. That's smartpassiveincome.com slash ConvertKit. And if you go to that affiliate link, you are going to see this landing page. And all you have to do is click on the create a free account button. Or if you're on the main ConvertKit landing page, it looks very similar. Just click that get started for free. The very first thing you'll do is just create your account login. You know how to do this. So again, I'm starting from zero. So on the very first question of whether or not I have any platform to migrate from, I'm just going to say, no, I'm just starting out. And next, we're going to talk about how big is my audience. And for this particular project, like I said, I'm starting from zero. So my audience is real small, one to 1,000. And that is going to put us in the free account, which is awesome. So next, ConvertKit is going to hit you with an existential question, which is what kind of creator are you? Because ConvertKit's entire mission is around supporting creators, and their platform is really customized toward supporting creators who need to communicate with their audience. Just choose the answer that is closest to you. If you're not sure, you can hit other or, you know, I'm just getting started, but my project is going to be around education. And so I will go with educator. And that's it. You have your account set up, but there's some additional customization that I want to walk you through to really help you get started. So you can see on the side here, ConvertKit has put together a little checklist that is sort of where they recommend you get started. We are not going to work on that checklist right now. The first thing we're going to do is go and configure some settings for our account. So I'm going to click up here on this little profile picture here. I'm going to click on the little carrot next to it and go to settings. So the first thing that I want to fill in here is information about me. Okay, I've uploaded my profile picture. The next thing I want to do here is set up two-factor authentication. Two-factor authentication is just really important for keeping your email list secure. And it would be easy to think like, oh, it's not that important right now. My list is so small. I'll just skip it. I'll set it up later. The thing is, you will not remember to do it later. And as your email list grows, your email list becomes the cornerstone of your business. And you need to keep the cornerstone cornerstone of your business secure. So set it up now. Just click on the button and you will enter in your phone number. On the next screen, after you've entered in your phone number, you will see this. Now, if you are not using Authy as an authenticator, you can click here to get a text message instead. It's not as secure as using a, a separate authenticator but it's better than nothing. Okay, now that you've got two-factor authentication turned on, let's move on to the next section. This first section up here is where you will set up the email addresses that you are sending from. So when you send an email out of ConvertKit, this is the from address. ConvertKit will send you an email from that address to confirm that you actually own and have control over that account. You can see that we've got a status of pending, which means I need to go into my email inbox and click the link in that email to confirm that this email address, mindy at mindysolves.com, belongs to me. So I'm going to do that and we'll be right back. And that brings me back to the home page where I'm signed in here. So let's take a look and see. All right, now this is marked as confirmed. If you have any other email addresses that you need to set up, if ones that are not the email address you used to sign in, you can just click add from address. ConvertKit will send an email to that. You just need to hit that button and um, that will verify the email address. Next, we wanna set our default time zone and sending time. So I'm in the central time zone. 
So I've set my time zone, and then if I wanted to adjust this default time, they have 11 a.m., this is the time that your autoresponder sequence emails are going to send out and sort of by default unless you change that configuration in the individual autoresponder sequence. So you can adjust that here. Next, you need to fill in a mailing address in order to be able to send out emails. That is required by law, by anti-spam laws, that you have a physical mailing address. And so you can put in uh, your street address, or if you say don't want to disclose your personal address, which is probably not the best idea, you can put in um, a mailing address, say that you get from like a mailboxes, et cetera, kind of place. Honestly, I don't know if mailboxes, et cetera, still exist, but that general idea where you can get yourself a business mailing address. Finally, in this section, we have the GDPR settings. And this is a law in the European Union that regards data protection. And it, it can be quite, um, restrictive to sort of the American way of thinking about data tracking, but you need to comply with it. Even if you say like, my business is based in the US and nobody from Europe is going to really interact with my business, don't count on it, okay? So you need to comply with GDPR regardless of where you are based in the world. And so you have some options here in terms of settings. There's a good health article here. This is again, this is I am not offering legal advice here. I am just making a choice for me and my own personal business. You need to make your choice for you and your business based on information provided by ConvertKit as well as say if you work with an attorney, that sort of thing. So make your own choice. Um, I am going to select the option that works for me. Okay, now we're gonna go on to the next section. Here is where you can set up your ConvertKit domain. There's a couple of ways that this comes into play. This is if you are going to be sending up a landing page for your business. ConvertKit landing pages are particularly a great way to get started if you are setting up a brand new venture and you have not had the time to set up a website yet. They're also great if you're just, you have an existing website, but you wanna quickly spin up a new project to sort of collect interest in it, a ConvertKit landing page is great there. By default, ConvertKit's just going to assign you a random domain for that at the .ck page. And you can see for me, they chose Adept Pioneer 700. That's not gonna work for me. I'm going to change this. Just click in here and type what you would like. And hit save. And if it's available, ConvertKit will let you have it. And if it's not available, they will let you know. Next, you do have the ability to install a custom domain. So I own that mindysolves.com domain, and I could either install that as the root domain, so mindysolves.com, in which case my entire website is just ConvertKit landing pages, or a subdomain like pages.mindysolves.com, in which case, um, a landing page that I set up, you would get to by going to pages.mindysolves.com slash whatever that page URL is. Recently at SPI, we had an event called Audience Driven and we set up a website called audiencedriven.co. We installed a custom domain, a custom subdomain in ConvertKit for that. Let me show you what that looks like. Here I am over in the SPI ConvertKit account, and this is a custom landing page that we set up for Audience Driven. It was to help us collect enrollments from a specific subset of the audience. And you can see that page was built in ConvertKit, and if we go and look at that page, it looked like this. You can see that the URL is summit.audiencedriven.co. And if we look at what that looked like in the settings here, you can see in custom domain, we had set up our custom domain being the subdomain summit.audiencedriven.co. And then we chose from our landing pages that were set up, we chose which one would be the home page for that. If you went to the audiencedriven.co URL without that summit prefix, that summit subdomain, you just got our regular website. So it's really handy by setting up a custom subdomain, you can make easy quick landing pages for your website 
or for the time being, it can be your whole website. To add in a custom domain, we'll click on the button here. And I'm going to choose a subdomain for my regular website. So I'm going to go with email.mindysolves.com. And now I'll need to go into my domain manager and add in the records that they have listed here in order to complete the setup for that subdomain. If you need some more help with that, you can go to learn more. Let me just show you what that looks like. And ConvertKit will walk you through that process. We're going to do it very quickly here. I'm in the advanced DNS settings for my domain manager, and I'm going to add in the records that ConvertKit gave me. Validation might not work right away. It can take up to 24 hours for that to, to take effect. So don't panic if you see this validation failed note. Just come back in tomorrow and try to validate again. For now, I'm going to close this out. And you can see it says unverified right here, and that's okay. I'll come back tomorrow and check. Now again, setting up a custom subdomain or a custom domain, this is just an extra step, but it does add to the professionalism of you and your business to be using your own domain rather than just the convert kit domain of mindysolves.ck.page. It's a little more professional looking. Finally, we see here at the bottom this verified sending domain. You can skip that step. This is only if you are sending an extremely high volume on a regular basis. They say at least 50,000 messages a month. You will not be doing that if you're just getting started. We'll hit save here. And now let's move on to the next section and that's payouts. So right now we have a $0 balance and that is not a surprise, we just got started here. But I want you to know that this tab exists because you can accept payments through ConvertKit. You can put buttons in your email, you can set up those ConvertKit landing pages in order to accept payout. And if you do accept payments, this is where you will find the payout history. This is where you'll get more information about the money that is going to be coming to you. So just know that this exists in the event that you start using those features of ConvertKit. Now we're on the advanced tab and I just want to walk you through the settings here. So at the top, you can add an affiliate link it doesn't hurt to set up a ConvertKit affiliate account as you are using the product and people are visiting your, pay, your landing pages, they're interacting with the email forms you might embed on your website, they're seeing in the footer that your email is coming from ConvertKit, they might think, man, I need to set up an email account for my business. I like the way this works. I am going to click on that button and get started with their product. And if they click on that Powered by ConvertKit badge and you have set up your affiliate account, then you'll get credit for any money that they spend with the company. You'll get, you'll get a percentage of that. Next, API key. Now, you're not going to need this right off the bat, but you may be called on in setting up integrations with other services. They may ask you for your API key, and this is where it is stored. And so if you're going to set up Zapier, you will need your API key. If you are, say, setting up an integration with another platform, maybe like Teachable or something like that, they may ask you for your API key. This is where you find it. Finally, we have two switches here that we can flip regarding advanced tracking. The first one is if your website is built on WordPress and you plan to install ConvertKit's WordPress plugin, um, and that WordPress plugin just makes it a lot easier to drop ConvertKit forms into your WordPress website. In that case, you may wish to flip this switch on. This will just help with some tracking from your website into ConvertKit. Next, I'm definitely going to turn on this switch right here. This is going to help you with Google Analytics. And so it, what it's doing is it's automatically adding UTM parameters to any links that you put in your emails. What this does is it lets Google Analytics track that traffic to that link that you've put in your email is coming from a ConvertKit email. And you may find that really useful, say, if you are looking at traffic on a landing page that you have set up and you're trying to figure out how many of the people who are landing on this this page of mine, this sales page perhaps, how many of those people are coming to this sales page directly because of an email that I sent them? If you have this switch turned on, it makes figuring that out in Google Analytics a heck of a lot easier. I will click Save Changes. 
Now that's everything that you need to do in terms of configuring your ConvertKit account. But where do you go from here? Okay, so you're probably going to want to set up either in an email form or a ConvertKit landing page so that you can start to collect email addresses into your ConvertKit account. I've got a great series of videos on how to do that. If you go to the SPI YouTube channel and scroll down here to the email marketing playlist, you'll see the videos called How to Create an Evergreen Email Newsletter in ConvertKit. That is the first in a four part series Series, and it walks you through everything you need to know in terms of setting up an autoresponder sequence, setting up an opt-in form, setting up a ConvertKit landing page. It will show you how to use ConvertKit's automation templates so that you don't have to start from zero. That is a great series to get started with, and we've put a link to the first video in that series below. After you've reviewed those resources, you might just be wondering like, what do I do next in terms of starting an email list? How do I grow a following? How do I get people to subscribe to me? We've got two great free resources for you on that topic. If you go to startanemaillist.com, that will take you to our free resource called How to Build an Email List. This is a comprehensive guide on all of the things that you can do to help you build your email list. And really, if just finding your initial subscribers is the real challenge that you're trying to overcome, we have the zero to 100 email challenge. This is a three day email based challenge that walks you through the process of getting your first 100 email subscribers. Check out these free resources and good luck with your new ConvertKit account.